Hey Positive Readers, it's Positive Writer here today with another video. And today, I'm coming at y'all with a TV talk. A TV chat, if you will. And this TV chat is going to be for the first episode of the new CW superhero TV show, Naomi. I am very excited to be talking about this show today because I love it so much and I've been thinking like so much stuff about it because I just want to like boost it. I want it to be like talked about. I want to talk about it with everybody and I want everybody to know about it. So I'm here talking about it on my channel. The title of this video is Recap and Rave because I'm going to recap and also rave about all the stuff I love about the show because it's great. And so yeah, so I haven't seen a CW show in a minute. Naomi is probably my, like definitely my favorite so far. I really am enjoying this, and it's only been one episode, guys. Like, it's almost like I can't believe it because it's only been one episode. Naomi is a new superhero TV show on the CW, and it's about this girl, Mei Mei Almi, who is kind of new to town. Uh, she's a military child, and so uh, she is adopted, and so her adoptive parents, uh, her dad, I'm pretty sure, is in the military. And so she moves around a lot and stuff, and so she's in this, like, town with these people that she doesn't really know. But she's not with the type of person that is like oh my gosh like man like, she's not like shy about it or even really introverted she really is out there the show like really opens up and again this is the recap and so I, i'm not gonna like spoil it right off the back because you might be here just to find out if the show is good and so i will tell you you know the, the things you'll see once you first like click play um and it really opens up with her being so lively uh she's like entering a party and not only does everybody know her for something that people would call or consider nerdy. She runs a very, very popular Superman fan account, and so people at this party really know her, even if it's kind of from the fact of she's a nerd and they are, and they kind of just know that she's known for this. Uh, but the thing is that she doesn't really care why or how they know her, uh, or whether or not they think she's a nerd. She just does her thing. Like, she goes into the party, she has great comebacks. Uh, great one-liners. I really, I really love this girl. Like, she's great right off the back. Like, you really just get to meet her and see her energy, and she, like, starts jamming out to a song. And it's just super cool, and I really Really enjoyed that scene because I just think it was so unlike any opening scene I've ever seen and she's so unlike I think any protagonist that I've seen in a while in any teen show I don't even really watch teen superhero shows never really have and so maybe this is normal but for me it's not normal and so I'm just like wow like this girl's crazy like she's great I love it like you know it's a great show um it's just, I'm like, it's like a very much of a marvel to me. It's just like, wow. And again, the show was, uh, it was produced and stuff by Array, which is Ava DuVernay's, um, production company. And I love her so much. I'm so glad of all the stuff that she's doing. It's just amazing. Um, and it's, the show was based off of the 2019 comics, uh, about Naomi the Superhero. Um, and so the show is basically just about her, uh, finding out her powers basically like her finding out that she has powers after running a fan account for somebody who has powers and so it's crazy and so we get to really like follow her through this journey again i'm saying all this and i haven't seen really much anything past the first episode but anyway let's get into this recap and then obviously we're going to get through the rave too and so if you haven't seen it yet go watch the first episode and then come back and talk to me before tuesday so then you'll be up to date so then and when i make the next video for next episode you'll be ready to watch and so Peace out, people who have not seen the first episode because you don't want to spoil. You want to see that for yourself. And so anyway, like I said, this this episode opens up, and I love the opening so much. Uh, one of the things right off the bat that I really enjoyed uh, was Naomi's interaction with Nathan, which is uh, this guy that she used to date. And so like she sees him, and they had like this really cute banter going on that makes it obvious that they have history together. And I just really liked it. It was a very short interaction. She's like he's like making fun of her, like teasing her about being a nerd and having this fan account. And she's like, you know clapping back with these great comebacks. I don't even know what she said, but, like, they're so, like, fast and, like, they, you know, she really meets him. Um, like, they're evenly matched. Like, his teasing doesn't, like, go over her head. She's like, you know, and what about you, you know? And so she, like, start, starts calling him out uh, for not understanding class and, like, are you really in class or are you just there to sit still and look pretty? And I was just like, oh, you know, and he's like, oh, and she, like, walks out of the room, like, mic drop. And then he's like, do you think I'm pretty? Oh, my gosh. And I just, I really love them. I don't think I know, I, I don't think you know at the start of the episode that they have history together, but I so love that interaction so much that when I found out that they did have history together, I was already so on board with them that it made perfect sense um and so the rest of the episode continues and like he they dance at this party and um 
And, you know, the, her friend's kind of teasing her for breaking up with this guy, uh, Nathan, who she just was talking to. And she's kind of just like, I don't know what you're talking about, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, they're all really easy. I think that, that the characters are so mature, but also very casual, and they don't complicate things, which is something I really like to see, because I think that superheroes and powers and stuff can get so complicated. I love some characters that are kind of thrown into it without having to be, like, so crazy about it. Um, and so anyway, you know, you know, she's just a normal kid, you know, she's a normal high school girl, but she's not really not normal. She's very eccentric and authentic. I think that she has a great style. I love her clothes like her style is amazing um and she rides a skateboard to school every day and I just love it like she does these like really cool tricks everybody from the neighborhood is like hey hey even though she's like new to town they're all kind of know her just because she has such a big personality and I just love her so much and then suddenly this like Superman stunt pops off like apparently people do Superman stunts and so you know some guy like dress up as Superman and like come into the square like act like he's flying and then everybody's like oh my god Superman and then everybody's like wow and because she runs one of the top fan accounts you know, she has to get coverage for this, so she runs out of class to get coverage for the Superman thing, and ends up missing it because she has, she hears, like, this buzzing, and then, like, falls out on the ground, and stays there for, like, a, a minute, and when she wakes, when she wakes up, the whole thing's over. And so not only does she not understand what happened, now she has to actually go and find the people who did see what happened and collect footage, footage from them and then talk to them about what happened and find out what they saw and try to make her own conclusions. My favorite thing about this scene and about this quality of her personality that we start to see in this episode because of these events is her determination. I love the fact that she was not like going to just sad, be sad and wallow in the fact that she missed this stuff. I love that she immediately got up and was like, I need to find out what happened, and I'm going to no matter what. I really love her determination. It means everything to me. Like, to see a protagonist so willing to move. Like, so... Like, the, the story moves with her because she's always moving. And, like, the story is not happening to her. She's happening to the story almost. And I really, really like that. I like that quality in a protagonist. I think that's amazing. Um, I think sometimes side characters kind of drive the story just because the protagonist kind of, like, just be kind of thrown into something. But she really takes charge, and I really just like it. And, but not in a, like, tough take charge. Like, she really is just such an easy person, but she has such a determination and fire about her. Um, I really just love watching her do her thing. So she, like, you know, she collects some footage and stuff, and then her and Nathan, which and Nathan's apparently a video editor or so, I was immediately like, wow. I really loved that interaction because it was kind of just this intimate scene of them just kind of sitting in this booth editing this footage because what she had done was, which was so, so clever, she had gotten footage from all these people and then got Nathan to help her piece it together and so from all these different angles, you kind of get to see what happened. You know, you kind of get fragments of this, and then you kind of put it together to be a full puzzle. And I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, I, I really have never seen really a scene like this, and I really just had fun watching them piece it together and then watch it, and then Nathan's, like, marveling at his editing. And then um, in the midst of this whole thing, uh, and then finding out what happened at the end of the scene, like this, like, big reveal from this video, uh, they have, like, a really great discussion, and I didn't expect it. Um, I, I don't watch a lot of TV shows, guys, um, and the ones I do watch are kind of so blatantly their own show that whether teens act like this or not, it makes sense to their environment. But I think that this this show being so down to earth, even though it's about superheroes, um, was something that took me by surprise. Like, the characters have such a great head about them. I love their conversation that they have with each other. Like, Nathan and um, Naomi just kind of sat there, oh my god, in, in. I I did not, I'm not lost on the N-N, okay, the N-A-N-A, -N -A. I'm not lost on that. I just really, really enjoyed the entire conversation because they kind of were teasing each other at first, you know, because he's like, you know, I'll do anything for you. And he's like, you know, even though you broke up with me. And then that, that line, I think is just amazing. Again, when you have talking about teenagers, teenagers can be so, like, turned off from their emotions and, like, so awkward and stuff. But I just really like how they presented this because that line right there explained everything about how he feels. Because... He's like a pretty boy. He's like, you know, I'm I'm above it all or whatever. You know, not like in a mean, arrogant way. He's not like a, a stuck up type person. He kind of is just that guy in school or whatever. And so to kind of see him actually be upset because she broke up with him, it's just like, wow. And the fact that she broke up with him anyway, it's just like, wow. You know, and so I think I think that the characters are very unique. I love their interactions and their, their relationships and stuff. I'm so excited to like watch them grow. But yeah, they just had a really great conversation because he kind of wanted to know why she broke up with him and also wanted to know what she thinks of him now and because she kind of was saying that just because she broke up with him doesn't mean she has changed how she feels about him and he's kind of like what can you elaborate and then she kind of explains I guess the reasons why she still talks to him anyway and the reasons probably why she dated him is just like he's a good person you know he's kind he's helpful he's loyal you know and I was just like wow like the fact that two people could sit there and talk about that in a high school setting I was just like 
whoa like i was just like i was on the floor like really it just really fueled the fire to me shipping them i, I like they have history guys like i really like them i really like them i would love it if they were in the game again i'm not like pushing it like whatever happens happens i love both of their characters too much to force them or want them to do something that they might not want to do but i just really like their relationship even if it just stays friends i love the wholesome vibes that they give off together um and then that leads me to the epiphany at the end of this scene which was like this big reveal that not even like a big reveal but it was like uh, a a an exposure of one of the other characters who we don't even know yet until this scene um, because they're watching this footage that's been pieced together and this guy that runs this tattoo shop on Main Street where all this uh, crazy stuff, stuff was happening he's like standing in the middle of the action just kind of looking at it like everybody else is running crazy because Superman's in town and he's kind of just looking at it like hmm and so they're like yeah we gotta find out what's happening so they both Naomi and Nathan, best duo they go and they go talk to this guy this tattoo parlor guy because they have to find out what happened, what he knows, and all of this. And so they go to the shop, and I really like I really like his character. D is his name, and he runs his tattoo parlor. Um, as you can kind of tell when they walk in, that like, he's kind of skittish. He doesn't really like like company. He's kind of like get out or whatever. But he gets he does know her by name, and he's open to answering her questions. And then so she asks him, you know, what's going on with this, and he kind of beats around the bush like I don't really know. You know, I don't really know about that. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, um. And, and Naomi's not even afraid to just call her, call him out and be like, I think you're lying. Um, Nathan's kind of like, we need to leave. And then the guy immediately jumps on the bandwagon of that. Like, D's like, yeah, you should go. And then Naomi's like, well, you're being fake. It kind of propels him into this confession that he hired the Superman guy to, you know, he hired an actor to play Superman, thinking that it might entice people to come to his tattoo parlor. And so he did it all kind of as a stunt to get people to come to his shop. And so Naomi's like, okay. All right. But he, t he, he tells her that she's asking the wrong questions. And she's kind of like, I don't understand like what you're talking about, but okay, that's cool. Um, and he also said something weird about March 14th, 2004, I think. And that's her, her adoption day, the day that she was given to her parents. And so she's confused because how does he know that? You know, he's a random dude from the tattoo parlor. Like, I don't understand. This is a small town. People talk, you know, that type of vibe. It's kind of like, how do you know this? But anyway, they leave it at that and they leave. Then, you know, we have Naomi kind of talking to her parents, and, you know, I liked the scene with the parents. It was really cute. Um, she's kind of just asking around town, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, her parents really don't understand why he knows about the date, but she, but they also aren't alarmed that he knows. Uh, you know, it's a small town again, people talk. And so it's like, you know, she, she kind of is, like, on the fence on whether or not he actually did this. But she ends up telling her entire, like, fan base that he did because she finally has found the truth. Um, and then they have to go on like a, they have to go to the military base um, in the area for like a presentation because she's going to be debating with one of her classmates about the human condition or something. And so her parents surprise her with the car and she gets to drive to this military base that I really like. Again, I love the scenes where she kind of just being cute and like chill and stuff. I really like her character. But anyway, um, so she goes and so she's going to do this thing. You know what I'm saying? She's going to do this debate. And um, I really like this scene. This is probably my favorite scene from the entire episode. For this to be a pilot really just kind of took me by surprise because this debate that they're having is kind of about nurture versus nature and whether or not your genes determine who you become in your life. Um, and the, the girl that was going against her kind of was like, okay, you know, our genes do determine it. We don't have to think about it at all, actually, because our genes are the reason why we do all this. And then Naomi comes on the scene and she's like, I think that giving the responsibility of who we become and who we are and who we choose to be... Um, giving that responsibility to our genes kind of just makes it easier to not define ourselves for ourselves, you know, to not to not then go out and just kind of self-explore. You know, she was kind of just calling her, not calling her out, but she was calling the argument out as being a cop-out from truly finding out who you are and truly examining that uh, so you go and find the truth, you know? And so she was just talking about that and how Nurture versus nature and genes and all that stuff plays a part, but who you really are is something that you have to choose at some point. It's not something that has anything to do with anybody else. And I really love that conversation. Um, for that to be had at the on the first episode, I was just like, yeah, this is this is phenomenal. She's about to kind of explore, explain it more, and then also Nathan's in the audience. But anyway, uh, also all her friends are in the audience. Mike, like Nathan's the only friend. She has like a best friend. She has like these other people who are like who run fan accounts and know about comics and stuff. And you will meet like them more. So I'm kind of talking about the highlights of the episode because I don't want to like talk about everything. Like you can go find out for yourself, even if you have haven't seen it and you're still here. I'm not telling you everything. So go watch it. But anyway, all her friends are in the audience watching her. Her parents are in the audience, and she's about to like deliver this explanation of her argument. 
and then she starts hearing this, hearing this buzzing again that she heard during the stunt. And then she's like, I don't know what's happening. I need help. Somebody help. But she kind of can't articulate that, and so she's kind of just stuttering and kind of like, I heard your question, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then she ends up like fainting. Um, they obviously come to her aid, they're in the military base, so people have doctors and stuff, and so she kind of gets up. And then she's kind of like, you know, her friend who is coming over there, I don't know, I don't know their names. Like, Nathan and Naomi are like the main ones in my head, I need to learn the other names. But anyway, uh, her best friend's kind of like, you know what I'm saying, I'm glad they walked away, because we, can we like talk about this? Like, you can drive? Um, and so they like have a little conversation about the fact that she now can drive and, uh, you know, have a car and all that. Um, because it's like a big milestone for her and so I it's a really really cool I, it's a very coming of age type story uh mixed up in with the supernatural super power air uh uh elements and I really like these mix I like how they go back and forth between these things but while her friend is talking to her she kind of zones out and notices that when she takes her glasses off and then puts them back on like if there's something that happens um, because she does wear glasses. Amazing. She takes them off and she can see better than she can see with them on, which is like, what's going on? And so she takes them off and then she finds out that she can zoom her vision in and see some fine print on a piece of paper that these two guys are holding. And the piece of paper says that an artifact was found in the woods somewhere that has to do with this stunt. And so she's like, wow, I thought I knew the whole story. And so it immediately then cuts to her in the woods trying to find this artifact. Again, I love her her spirit and her willingness to go out and find what she's looking for. And so she's in the woods. She's like going to find this thing and she finds like this disc with some writing on it. She's like, I don't know what this is. Um, and then suddenly this guy pops up. This guy's name is Zumbato. And he is like the owner of this dealership this car dealership in the area um who they don't like because he kind of rips off people in the area and stuff and so they don't think he's a really good person but for him to be here in the woods while she's looking for this artifact is even weirder and they're like i don't understand like what's going on and so she's like i don't know what's happening and he like goes into this big monologue and, and stuff about how you know uh you know she's not asking the right questions she's she must be clueless He's tired of her acting coy, you know, why is she acting like she doesn't know what's going on? And Naomi's like, I don't know what's going on, and obviously this doesn't make any sense to anybody who hasn't watched this, because it didn't make any sense to me. And so they're kind of having this conversation about how, about his own becoming. Uh, Zimbardo is just talking about how he used to want to be like everybody else too, and how hard it is to, when you find out that you're not like everybody else. These leaves start flying around, it's a very, very, um very intense scene because Naomi's kind of pulling back because she doesn't understand what's happening and she kind of wants him to get away uh, because he's trying to take this disc from her. Um, but also, he's explaining very firm-footedly about how she's avoiding her entire destiny or whatever and she's kind of just confused. And so she kind of runs away and uh, takes some pictures of the artifact and he ends up finding her and she ends up, something ends up happening where she ends up like flying away from him like almost and it's like, whoa. And then she's kind of like, well, how would you do that? And then he's like, you think I did that? And so she's like, whoa. Like, it's a very confusing thing for everybody involved, except for Zimbardo, because he knows. And so he ends up taking the disc and just tells her that she better stop acting a nut and to not believe everything that she thinks. And so then, you know what I'm saying, we have like the rest of the episode, which is kind of like her talking to the friend, her friends, uh, and they end up concocting this plan to go steal this disc back. Because whatever the crap he was talking about before, which they conveniently kind of forget, um, even though her best friend does believe her. Her best friend uh, that was at the uh, military base with her and all that, she believes her, um, the whole story, and is fully on board with this plan to go and steal this disc back from the bottom. Okay, so they all go. Nathan, her, I think her other friend's name is Anthony, um, her best friend, who I was just talking about, um, and this other girl who like knows some comic stuff, and I think this other boy, uh, or maybe that was all of them. I don't really, I forgot how many there are. I'm pretty sure there might be five though. And so they all go and they're gonna go in the middle of the night and steal this disc back. Very intense scene. I really like this scene. I love me a good like rescue, uh, get in, get out, spy undercover whatever i love that and so it's like the dead of night they're going to this guy's thing they're gonna break in and get this disc back so they go inside this place you know it's a little tensionated because anthony's there and nathan's there they don't really like each other again nathan's the townie that he kind of withheld the right address from from the uh, from the party and so it's kind of a little rocky but naomi holds it together because she's like the glue of all the friends and so uh she's kind of heading the mission so some people stay outside and um you know, they're kind of like, you know, watching and making sure no one comes in, making sure he's not coming back. Um, funny scene also because they have to use walkie-talkies that are like My Little Pony or something because Nathan had to get them from his sister. So, 
really, really funny. But anyway, um, I just love learning more about Nathan. Like, that's one of my favorite parts about this the show is to learn more about Nathan. Um, because Naomi, we know you know we're gonna learn about her because she's the main character. But Nathan is like my next favorite character, so I'm excited to learn more about him. But anywho, they go in and they find this safe. And um not only do they find a safe, uh, which they can't open, because I'll get back to that. But Naomi herself finds like a newspaper article uh, about a mysterious object landing um, in her in this town that they're in on the day that she was adopted, March 14th, 2004. And so she's like, this is a little sus. I don't know about this. And why is it in this guy's office? I don't understand. But anyway, she has to put it back because they have to find, they find this safe. And before they can get it open, the, the, the lookouts from outside are like, this guy's coming back. They have to run outside and like leave. And so they escape, uh, well not the disc, but they escape. And you think that's the end of the episode. But actually, it ain't because we got a really big reveal at the end of the episode, which is probably one of my other favorite parts of the episode because this episode was so powerful. I think it's the most powerful pilot I've seen in a while. I enjoyed how it really just didn't shy away from showing the values that the show is centered by, you know, even though it's the first episode, they really kept those intact and they showed you those. They put all their cards on the table and I love it. They pulled me in fully. But anyway, this last scene really was Naomi going back to this tattoo shop and confronting Dee about not only knowing her adoption day, but also because she knows he didn't do this. Like she knows he didn't do the stunt. And she keeps asking him who he is because in this picture on this newspaper clipping in 2004, which was almost 20 years uh, from now, um, he looks the exact same. D is like not aging, something's happening. She like, this is ridiculous. And so she goes back and asks him like, who are you? Like, what are you doing? Like, come clean now. And she's alone this time. And then he's like, you keep asking the wrong questions, you know, and he's kind of walking around the tattoo shop and he's kind of making all these like cryptic messages and stuff to her and she's kind of like, I don't know what's happening, what are you talking about? Um, it becomes more and more intense because he kind of just starts to really become a lot less skittish and a lot more firm in what he's trying to tell her about the fact that she's kind of been avoiding all this and, and about the fact that he has something to tell her that he didn't plan to tell her like this. You know, there was something that has to be told, but he was not planning for it to be told right now, but now she's pushing it, so now we're going to have to say something. Um, and she's like, what are you talking about? All this light started going crazy and kind of reminds us of the other scene in the woods with all the stuff started going crazy because her emotions were very high. And while all these lights are going crazy and flickering and stuff, he's like, you're asking the wrong question, um, Naomi. And so he keeps like asking her to ask the question again, hoping it'll be the right one. And... Then he like grows wings or something. Like some wings come out of his back. Like not like feathery nice wings, but kind of like mechanical almost. But they clearly come out of his back. So he's clearly not human. Something's going on. Um, and she's like, what are you talking about? Like, ah. And he says something like, you know, it's it's not it's not easy for people like us. And so clearly they are similar in some sense. And she's like, I don't understand what's happening. What do you mean? And he keeps telling her, ask me again. Like, ask me this question again. You're not asking the right question. And so she initially was asking him, who are you? You know? And then the last line of the episode is the right question, which she asks him, who am I? And so, oh, like, it's almost like I, I hate to end there because I, I, you know, I'm so excited to watch the next episode. I mean... That was a great pilot. Like, pilots are just amazing. Um, they can be so almost accidental in the sense that they can be like, you know, trying to show you something that you may or may not like, but they're kind of trying to show you in a way that's kind of not fully what it is because you might not like it fully. But I love how this show really stepped into itself in this pilot. Like, they really do put all their cards on the table so you know exactly what you're going to get with this show. Like, the values, the, the questions that are going to be asked, that question, who am I? That's kind of what the whole show is about. Her kind of uncovering her identity um not only as a superhero but as Naomi as a, a person and to have the first episode have that theme constantly running through it and have her figure that out finally at the end with still all these questions to be asked about other stuff I really enjoyed it I mean it was exhilarating it kept me on the other my seat great pilot again I haven't seen a pilot that was this good in a minute I haven't seen a pilot in a minute period but really Pilots this good are hard to come by, and so I really am just so in awe of Ava and everybody who works uh, on this show, and Casey, who plays the main character. I just am so proud, you know, like, she's literally, like, 17. She's the same age as the girl. I, I thought for sure she was going to be older just because the CW is known for picking people who are way older than their characters to play teenagers. But, no. Like, this, this is a 17-year-old girl who actually probably still is in high school uh, at the time of recording this show, and she's 
doing so well. She's been acting since she was a child, and so I'm just so proud of her, and I'm so glad to see her in this amazing role. I'm excited to see her expand as an actress, and to watch Naomi expand, and to see whatever she does in the future, and to watch the rest of the show, and hopefully see more of her relationship with Nathan, and I'm just super excited, honestly. I'm just, and so in all, I'm so proud of the cast, and the crew, and everybody. I just, I love everybody, and I'm excited. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this Raven recap. Uh, you will be getting these every week in Jesus' name, if the world, if the Lord permits. Uh, because these episodes come out weekly, and I'm excited to talk about them because they are amazing. Um, and so I love you. I hope you enjoyed this. I will see y'all later with another video. What did you think of the episode? If you watched it, if you didn't watch it, please do. Again, CW app. Uh, you can watch it for free. Also, it comes on cable TV or whatever you watch TV on on the CW channel at nine o'clock EST on Tuesdays. So, I love y'all. I'm going to see y'all later with another video. Peace out.